Folic acid has become an issue that we can no longer ignore. Due to our depleted and highly processed food supplies, many countries have mandated the addition of folic acid to some of the things we eat. However, the substance being added to our food is not the same as the nutrients that were taken out in the first place. We have been assured that the fortification programs have been a great success, including the reduction of serious birth defects. But is there a downside? This video covers how we got to this point and why the ever-encompassing folic acid fortification programs rapidly expanded beyond just pregnant women taking folic acid tablets. It also contains essential information for anyone consuming folic acid fortified foods, which is likely to be you. I'll outline what you need to know and how you can remedy the situation to help achieve your best health. Neural tube defects are feared problems in newborn babies and appear as deformities in the brain and spine that stem from early pregnancy. They include spina bifida, which is an opening in the spinal cord, usually located in the lower back. The severity can range from very mild, with almost no symptoms, through to severe, which can involve paralysis, incontinence and cognitive difficulties. Neural tube defects also include anencephaly, which is when the baby lacks most of its brain and dies around the time of birth or soon afterwards. The medical establishment acknowledged that there can be various environmental factors that contribute to neural tube defects, but concentrates on folate as the major problem. We can also see that under Wikipedia's spina bifida entry, it lists folate supplementation as the only preventative intervention. This is somewhat deceptive when neural tube defects are also known to be associated with geographic location, diet, alcohol use, diabetes and obesity. Just as importantly, they are associated with pregnant women being exposed to teratogenic substances. Known examples are prescription drugs such as carbamazepine and street drugs such as cocaine. However, we would suspect that this is the tip of the iceberg and there will be many other types of chemical poisoning in the diet and environment. You can watch my videos, The Toxicology Taboo and Toxicology vs. Virology, to learn about examples where the role of environmental toxins and disease have been covered up. It is important to note that one of the long-established principles of teratology is that the degree of severity of the deformities is dose-dependent and increases from no effect up to the totally lethal level. It must also be kept in mind that some compounds are severely toxic to the baby with no noticeable effects to the mother. For an example of this, you can watch my video, Safe and Effective Then and Now, which covers the thalidomide disaster. If we look at the recorded incidents of neural tube defects from different countries around the world, we see some huge variation. In my home country of New Zealand, they are relatively rare at just 3 per 10,000 births between 2005 and 2009, and Singapore was even lower during the 1990s at 1 1.2 per 10,000 births. Conversely, between 2004 and 2005, parts of China saw 199.4 per 10,000 births, which is a staggering 2%. One of the heralded folic acid supplementation studies was funded by the British Medical Research Council and published in The Lancet in 1991. This was a randomised double-blind prevention trial in the UK and six other countries. It concluded that folic acid supplementation was effective in preventing 72% of neural tube defects. There was a wide 95% confidence interval of 29% to 88%, but of more pivotal significance was the fact that the only women enrolled in the study were those deemed at high risk and all had previously affected pregnancies. The authors concluded that it is less clear whether all women planning pregnancy should take folic acid supplements. That sounds reasonable, but then they decided to go way out on a limb and stated, in any event, community-wide prevention may be difficult to achieve by providing supplements to everyone, and consideration should be given to extending the fortification of staple foods with folic acid. The next so-called landmark study was published in 1992 in the New England Journal of Medicine. 
This was a randomized control trial involving 4,753 pregnant women in Hungary. They concluded that there were six neural tube defects in the no folic acid group and none in the folic acid supplemented group. Something odd about this is that 6 out of 2,310 equates to 25 out of 10,000 births, which is a high rate of neural tube defects. And it is remarkable that there were absolutely no neural tube defects in the 2,394 pregnancies with folic acid supplementation. As we will see, this kind of result did not manifest later in the real world when it was applied to all pregnant women. The authors concluded that we think that all women planning pregnancy should receive a vitamin supplement containing folic acid. Subsequent to the publication of these studies, folic acid supplementation policies were adopted in many parts of the world and also expanded into folic acid fortification of food. A last note about the second study was that the authors were working for an institute that was a World Health Organization collaborating center. Collaborating centers are those, quote, designated by the Director General to carry out activities in support of the organization's programs. I have some other videos which cover examples of the organization's interesting programs. We now jump forward to the CDC's January 16, 2015 Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report, which was titled Updated Estimates of Neural Tube Defects Prevented by Mandatory Folic Acid Fortification, United States, 1995-2011. to It reported that, beginning in 1998, the United States mandated fortification of enriched cereal grain products with 140 micrograms of folic acid per 100 grams. Immediately after mandatory fortification, the birth prevalence of neural tube defects cases declined. Fortification was estimated to avert approximately 1,000 neural tube defects affected pregnancies annually. The birth prevalences of anencephaly and spina bifida during the pre-fortification, 1995 to 1996, and post-fortification periods for programs with and without prenatal ascertainment were estimated. Overall, a 28% reduction in prevalence was observed for anencephaly and spina bifida using data from all participating programs. The data was displayed on this chart, and we see something suspicious straight away, with the CDC only showing a limited number of years leading up to the mandatory folic acid fortification program. This is reminiscent of the way that the CDC portray the supposed benefits of particular injectables until researchers like Jordan Henderson expose the bigger picture, and we can see that the alleged impacts of these products are put into the correct perspective. Elsewhere, the CDC provides some data for 1983 to 1990, but this is for spina bifida only, rather than all neural tube defects. However, we can see that the incidence was already trending downwards well before folic acid fortification began in 1998. There is also something funny going on with the incidence of spina bifida being reported as 6.5 and 4.3 in the pre-fortification years of 1995 and 1996. This gives a weighted average of 5.6 per 10,000 births, significantly higher than 5 or 6 years earlier, because by 1990 the incidence had gone down to between 3 and 4 per 10,000 births. And we see that the post-fortification incidence, starting in 1999, is suspiciously close to the 1990 level. We can also look at the data from other countries, such as Saudi Arabia. The incidence of neural tube defects has been relatively high there, and note that this chart shows the rate per 1,000 births, not 10,000 births as we have just been discussing. The impact of their flower fortification with folic acid program in 2001 was fairly underwhelming. The authors concluded that, despite the implementation of fortification of flour with folic acid since 2001, the prevalence of neural tube defects in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is still high. This is due to the impact of genetic, syndromic and chromosomal causes of neural tube defects, not preventable by folic acid. Well, that's a fizzer for folic acid. Remember that Wikipedia's spina bifida entry listed folate supplementation as the only preventative intervention. That was also what was taught to most of us during medical training. In many countries now, not only is folic acid extensively added to food, 
but it is prescribed to pregnant women to take on a daily basis. Which brings us to the issue of folate versus folic acid. Although you may see these names being used interchangeably, they are not the same thing. Folate is what is found in nature. Folic acid, on the other hand, is a synthetic molecule made in the laboratory. It is an odorless yellow to orange brown crystalline powder, which is sometimes, quote, favoured over natural folate because of its chemical stability and lifespan. That is the version that is added to some foods with the label that they are fortified or enriched. As we've covered before, there is a difference between naturally occurring vitamins that exist in a group of different forms versus a synthetic version that is one type of chemical, in this case something different from what exists in a natural diet. The Wheat Foods Council website states that the organisation is an industry-wide partnership dedicated to increasing domestic wheat foods consumption. They make the interesting claim that enriched white flour is the finely ground endosperm of the kernel. The assumption that everything good has been stripped away is a fallacy. Many of the nutrients that have been milled out are replaced through enrichment or fortification. In reality, the grains have been severely depleted of a range of nutrients and their various forms are then replaced by some synthesized homogenous molecules with the claim that the final product is just as healthy. We learnt a lot about this problem after coming into contact with the wisdom of Dr. Ulrich Williams. Last century, he identified that food supplies were being compromised by not only poisoning of the soil with herbicides and insecticides, but the practice of processing and refining crops until they did not resemble how nature created them. The final products are made because they look pure. For example, bleached white flour or powdered sugar. They are also favoured as they may store for longer or take up less space. However, they are not comparable to the food they started out as. The solution is to avoid the highly processed products and get foods that are closer to the source. For example, instead of bleached white flour, use whole grain stone milled varieties. Instead of powdered sugar, use raw sugars or honey. The same principle applies to a pregnant woman looking to ingest adequate amounts of folate. Instead of relying on a tablet or fortified foods which only have a single synthetic compound, Look instead to get not just folate, but everything else from a top quality diet. The word folate derives from the Latin folium, which means leafy. So when looking for foods rich in folate, think foliage. Included here are spinach, lettuce and kale. Brussels sprouts, broccoli and asparagus are all good sources. And for very high folate foods, look to peanuts, lentils and beef liver. This complete dietary approach is superior because it improves the whole picture. As we have covered in our Q&A sessions, we often get feedback from our audience that improvements to major areas such as diet and water sources often has unexpected benefits in many areas of health. Sometimes we cannot pinpoint exactly which thing or things made the improvement, but that is less important as the strategy works and brings us closer to optimal health. It can be a mistake to take the reductionist approach and think that there must be one molecule or action that explains it all. That appears to have been what's happened with neural tube defects and folic acid. Mothers are being provided with a disservice when they are led to believe that a tablet a day has them covered. For the vast majority of pregnancies, the folic acid tablet will be of no benefit. For other pregnancies that result in neural tube defects, they will be misled into believing that they did everything that they could. It also distracts from why we have a depleted food supply in the first place and other causes of neural tube defects. While the fortification of foods with folic acid and regular supplementation has been heralded as bringing only benefits, we might want to take that with a grain of salt. For example, this 2014 paper titled Contemporary Issues Surrounding Folic Acid Fortification Initiatives reported on the problems of exposing entire populations to mandatory folic acid fortification. One of the measurable effects is the increased amount of unmetabolized folic acid now being detected in the blood. In contrast, some populations had no detectable levels prior to the fortification programs. 
They also reported on a study which found that unmetabolized folic acid was detected in cord blood from infants, independent of maternal periconceptional folic acid supplement intake. In other words, it is getting into everyone, including unborn children. Essentially, we are in the middle of a first-generation experiment in many countries. That's why for our family, we have taken the precautionary principle and have elected to reduce our exposure to these fortified foods. It can be difficult, and of course some synthetic folic acid is likely to come your way at times due to how widespread it has become. This map shows which countries currently have mandatory folic acid fortification, and there are more countries that have voluntary programs. The good news is that it is relatively easy to get folic acid out of your body. There is a link to another video in the description that outlines how long it takes to clear folic acid from the system and how to avoid more coming in, which is the trickier bit. It can be difficult to know where restaurants source their ingredients and folic acid can even be a surprise additive to fruit juices. The best strategy is to source natural food as much as possible and be vigilant in your checking of food labels. Unfortunately, most commercially made breads, breakfast cereals and many baked goods are likely to contain added folic acid. To combat this, we source an organic, unbleached, non-fortified stone ground flour from a farm in our own area of North Canterbury. I'll put a link in the description for the details. For those of you outside New Zealand, please let others know of your local suppliers of organic, unadulterated flour and other foods in the comment section. When it comes to folic acid supplements, it has to be kept in mind that they usually only deliver the synthetic compound. A typical label recommended by the CDC may look like this and is misleading. It states that the supplement contains folate when it only contains folic acid. DFE means dietary folate equivalent, but as I have just discussed, they are not the same thing. So, for women who are pregnant or planning a pregnancy, by far the best approach is to optimize all aspects of diet and health rather than blindly assuming that taking a pill a day is taking care of pregnancy. And on a wider front, we can all improve our food chain by supporting the suppliers who provide the best products that have not been nutritionally depleted in the first place. For more information on healthy living, please check out all the free resources at drsambailey.com. You can also consider becoming a subscriber to Dr. Sam's community and join my husband Mark and I in our twice monthly question and answer sessions where we share all our latest news and health tips. If you enjoyed this video, please visit supportdrsam.com 